Welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying the Iron Oath. Now, I have uh, I have played the tutorial, so this will not be a fresh impressions, but spoiler alert, um, I really like this game. Key provided by the publisher. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you, bud. Um, yeah, let's let's jump into it. Uh, let's go. We'll be the, the company of Big Simple. Big surprise right there. We could change our sigil. Sure. Um, yeah, I like that flag background. This, uh, this does, this is just like purely for like customization options. It, it doesn't really matter, but it's a nice little feature. I want, where's my pink? I want pink. Okay, well, this will have to do. Uh, choose difficulty. I'm going to go with the standard battle hardened. This, uh, this game is, is going to be very dialogue heavy. I'm not going to cut all of it out. I will probably uh, edit out some of the reading because uh, this is also a very mechanics heavy game and I do want to feature the mechanics. But for the interest of getting you in the mood for the game, uh, let's, let's get, read this first preamble. In an era all but forgotten, the gods once lived alongside humanity in the heart of Calum. However, an unknown cataclysmic... Uh, event plunged the world into a dark age. History was lost to time, and so too were the gods. In their absence, a rebuilding humanity was left to contend with the emergence of a great being of darkness from the void. Every few decades, in an event called the Scourge, the dragon's arrival would bring death and disease to the land. Those afflicted by the dragon's blight would lose their minds and bodies as they slowly became abominations of flesh, an outcast, a society known as the Blighted. Despite centuries of effort from the Vanguard Order and the realm's greatest heroes, no lasting victory against the dragon could be achieved. Humanity has now come to accept the inevitability of the Scourge as part of life, enduring or in some cases thriving despite it. With whispers of an impending Scourge circulating, you and your company find yourself in a burial crypt not far from the city of Andalon. A simple retrieval of smuggled supplies, or at least that's what your employer had promised. Uh, I think I may have forgotten to turn the tutorial off, so I'll probably be skipping this tutorial in favor of explaining how this game works. Um, I've been playing a lot of games in this vein lately, but basically we're going to have uh, hex-based tactical combat with a little bit of d and All that really means is that we have flanking and attacks of opportunity. We also uh, have kind of RPG leveling up uh, progress for our, our characters, as well as equipment loot. All right, so here we go. Damned grave robbers, stay sharp. No doubt his companions will have heard that. Everyone stands still. Tensions rising as they grip their weapons tight and scan the room for further hostiles. You hear a muffled shout uh, from someone in an adjacent corridor, likely directed toward their now deceased associate. The sound of quickening footsteps soon follows, and three figures burst through a doorway at the side of the room. Shit! Should I go and alert the others? Eurek shakes his head, eyes fixed on the enemy. No time for that. We've got no choice but to fight. Begin combat. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be skipping the, 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 the tutorial. Uh, I, I'm going to try to anyway. Um... So we've got a myriad of adventures here. Basically, we've got two melee fighters. Well, actually, no, we've got three melee fighters and a ranged spellcaster. The spellcaster is going to move behind this rubble. The rubble is going to uh, basically serve as cover. Uh, if they're standing right behind the cover, then it serves as cover for them, um, but not as an impeding kind of uh, obstruction for them. So basically, if this cover was in between the the mage and the person they were trying to fight then it would serve as uh as an obstruction and and they would do less damage but anyway we're, we're going to be able to do our full amount of damage and it's going to tell us to wait we can wait until end of turn this is a, a, a mechanic i i actually really appreciate i'd like to see it more in uh, in games is the ability to to kind of wait until the end of turn it makes like turn order a bit more of a uh, almost a character in in combat like it makes it more of a 
a mechanic that you have to work around. You may have heard that slight creaking. That's because we walked over this uh, this the, this pit. You can um, just like end up in a situation where you like if you walk on a hazard or sit you know a, 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 some kind of boarded up pit, then it'll it'll break and it'll do some hazard damage to you. But then you can also use those to your advantage because you can, as you can see, kick and, and push and shove uh, enemies into those hazards. I'm going to move our dude there. Sorry, not dude. Zone of control. So zone of control is a way of telling us that uh, basically every enemy, including uh, ourselves, like, you know, this this works both ways, uh, has, has basically a threat zone. And we can move, we can freely move within that threat zone, which is kind of nice. It's a little bit of an added bonus. But uh, if we move outside of that threat zone, then you can see that little icon indicates that we will be taking an attack of opportunity. So we're gonna go ahead and do our standard attack on this guy. We have a clear view of that archer, take him down. Um, this is gonna tell us about line of sight. Line of sight is of course very important. This is also telling us about special abilities. Special abilities are cool, and they do, again, kind of work within the limitations of D&D in that you have a certain amount of times you can cast spells and no more than that, basically. Uh, and this is going to show us how we can move, like the green hexes indicate that we can move and then also attack. The gray hexes mean that we are going to be running um, which means that we're using up our full turn in order to, to move to that location. If I wasn't in a t tutorialisms right now, I would not have done that because it's rarely worth using up that movement. We're going to go ahead and finish this guy off. Standard attacks have a chance to miss, but uh, special attacks do not. So um, it is sometimes worth using that standard of uh, the, the special attacks purely because you know you're not going to miss with them. This uh, tutorialism is also going to tell us about flanking. So because we have uh, ally, an ally on the other side of the enemy, we're going to gain a bonus two damage here. Time to end this. And we of course also have criticals. You know, roll, roll that nat 20 um, to, to do extra damage. Uh, I am going to skip some of the dialogue. There is a lot of dialogue, and if I was playing this game um, as a series, I would 100% go through it because it is it is compelling, and I'd like to know more about this world. I should mention, I know it may be bad form, but we're you know we're eight minutes in. This game is in, in early access. There is a very well put together road map that uh, sees basically how the uh, devs are going to bring this game from its current state into 1.0. And I will say, as it is right now, like if you're wondering, well, should I buy it now or should I uh, wait? The game feels very feature complete right now. Uh, you're, you're likely going to hit the wall of like, okay, this is where development has stopped. But as a game, you could definitely play it and, and, and enjoy it as it is now. So this is uh, basically our dungeon mechanics. We have uh, kind of three layering uh, ways of, that we have that we play this game. Uh, we have our in-game combat We have, like our our combat battle map Then we have our dungeon layout and then we have what which we won't see for a while um, Our basically our over map where we can see where different locations are that we're going to be exploring um, This is this the dungeon layout is interesting. It's an it's a interesting way of doing kind of like uh, stringing combats together and it's one I haven't seen done too many times before uh, where we're, we're exploring the dungeon and we actually have to scout out. It has it has a lot of D&D in it. You have to scout out. You may have to um, kind of navigate traps. Traps are not done with like your your standard flair of like, oh, okay, well, you you navigated the trap or you, you know, picked the lock or, or that. But you do have decisions you have to make here. Like, oh, do we want to loot the thing? Um risk setting off something so you have to make decisions then um your different characters part as part of your party are going to take uh get either morale bonuses or morale deficits and that's definitely going to affect how well they do in combat we also have a time duration mechanic and what this is going to mean is that um 
Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna want to take some provisions. Uh, basically, as we explore the dungeon and ta time progresses, we're gonna be getting um, kind of debuffs that affect uh, us for the rest of the dungeon until we can maybe get rid of them. This includes things like oh, uh, we have a better chance of being ambushed when we're waiting around or doing stuff. Uh, but it also it serves as a way to kind of like. Um, hurry you along and and uh, you know you don't you don't necessarily want to stand still and you don't want to be doing like exploring every sing single nook and cranny of the dungeon because that's going to eat up time and it's going to make the dungeon overall more difficult to deal with so here are, are consumables uh, it takes time to use these consumables but uh, you know when outside of combat you're definitely going to want to use these nonetheless to uh, to heal up our group. We can also, I, I really appreciate this mechanic, use uh, our our party or adventure's skills to accomplish the same thing. That was a complete waste. I shouldn't have done that, but you know, I guess to example uh, how it works, you can, you can use the heal spell in order to heal your adventures without using up your consumables. At the start of combat, we can also arrange our group, and I usually like to put um, our mage in the back we definitely want don't want to start combat on these boards although i don't know maybe maybe that's not a bad thing i don't know if it would that hazard is going to trap like right away um so then we're gonna you know like i i generally as i play these games like to hold back see what the enemy does we do have archers so um I, i've unfortunately put our uh, monkish character in line of sight of that archer and then you know now, now they're going to be in in range uh, but something I could do is we're gonna take her I like to see I see this character as kind of a paladin we're gonna put her close to our monk and then use safeguard and safeguard is something that has to be charged so you can see at the top there at the turn order uh, when they're actually gonna finish casting this spell but it's going to uh, unfortunately be after the archer so the archer is going to get their shot off before I finish casting it I'll do it anyway just to show off what it does but you know it, it's going to be a protection spell for both her and the monk um, something we could do well this isn't going to really help either because this is also a spell that takes time to cast but we could to do a, a conduit um, or an arc lightning conduit is almost an insta kill. In fact, we can see right there that it would be an insta kill. However, it also takes time to cast. Instead, what I'll do is an arc lightning because this will do damage to both these guys since they are adjacent to one another. So he did, in fact, get his uh, take his shot off on the monk. Well, that's that's a real shame. So what I'll do is I'm gonna throw down another uh, fire trap. And I'm, I'm hoping that this guy's going to walk into it. No big deal if he doesn't. Oh, he did. Nice. All right, so the monk's got his protection spell on him now. Um, so what we could do is we could... Uh, uh, that's right. He waited, didn't he? So he actually used up his movement already. Um, so instead, I'm going to have him guard so he gets an extra defense. Now he can move and he's going to probably run in there. Actually, I, th I think I want to get him like right in there so that he can do uh, a crescent wave. That's going to hit two different enemies. And this guy's going to take a little bit of an extra damage because he got smacked into a, a, some environmental obstruction. Uh, we're also... You can also swap in it, like allies, so I could, I could move with our... Um, our mage here and then that would that would swap places but I don't think that that's gonna be particularly useful instead I'm gonna move her over here and try and kill this guy there we go um, so we I see uh, honestly a, a good opportunity to use another conduit and in fact or sorry not conduit arc lightning and that's actually gonna kill a dude which is nice and uh, maybe I want to throw down another trap I am like really burning through our spells but I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing. You do get, you do replenish your spells at the end of the dungeon. Um, so there is that to consider. Also, uh, some of these, some of these uh, spells are pretty circumstantial. I find the trap one is uh, a little bit difficult to get off. So if you see an opportunity to use it, I would say take it. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. So this is the monk's super special, and you. It, Every, every spell and super uh, special ability 
has an opportunity to be upgraded. So our, our monk is currently being flanked, and unfortunately that trap ended up not being set off. I'm going to take a turn to heal our, our monk. It's not going to fully heal them, but that, that's okay. Uh, I wonder if that trap goes off. It does go off for us. I was kind of hoping there would be no friendly fire there, but I, I guess having friendly fire with that trap uh, means you have to take special consideration for it. So this guy's going to continue to get um, flank, flanking, uh, but unfortunately he did shove our monk into the dog and that ended up killing him. I'm just going to beat this guy up. This was not uh, maybe the greatest combat. I, I definitely made mistakes, but you know, that's going to happen. This is definitely, um, this this game is pretty difficult. It uh, Things can change dramatically on the field. Oh, we have deadly, deadly contraption. So this is our debuff. So our, our time, um, basically time, time turner has like reset. It's back to one. And as I understand it, what happens is every single time time passes, um, there is a chance to get a, uh, a debuff, right? So when it gets to like 10, you know, 11, 13, whatever, the higher it gets, the more odds there are of having your debuff. And then when it gets to 16, that is a 100% chance. So um, this, it isn't like, oh, I have 16 turns of, of grace to kind of make decisions. No, it's that you have 16 turns before you for sure are going to get a debuff, but um, there's a chance every single time this increases for that to happen. Um, which definitely is a little bit different and, and adds a little bit of risk to taking more time, which is a good way of, of you know, like m you really do have to consider, well, I could take some time to like heal up, but that's going to make things more difficult. So we have a cave in here. Uh, I, I do want to take a, a moment to heal up our monk, even though that is going to add to our time modifier. We're gonna go ahead and scout ahead. Scouting ahead is one of those things like it gives you the opportunity to uh, get the drop on some enemies or maybe uh, get some like, get get, uh, get an opportunity or get, get some um, a benefit over the next tile. But of course it does take more time and then you end up in a situation where you could be uh, facing some dangerous hazards. So there is a cave in. We have a decision to make. We could move the rubble by hand, which is going to take more time, or we could try and blast a hole with magic. I blasted a hole with magic and um, seemed to be okay. I don't know if maybe I'll get a different uh, result here. Consider yourselves lucky to be unharmed. Okay. Easy now, it's just me. So we're going to scout ahead. We did see a combat, which is good. I'm pretty sure that means we have the uh, potential ambush here. We, we get the drop on the enemy. Not this time. We have our first set of undead. We'll go ahead and arrange things. This is gonna, this is gonna be work. Since we do have the cover here, we might want to um, you'd use it. So instead I, I might hold people back but they also have range, so there, there's that to consider. I'll, I'll, I'll bring them back. We'll see if we can't um, do something interesting here. I don't want to just like rush into every combat. So that's going to force them forward. They're moving forward. I don't think this guy's got line of sight to anyone yet. Um, instead of guarding right away, we'll go ahead and, and delay everyone's turn just to see what happens. This guy has range now, so he could he could do some stuff. He could also uh, do a conduit. I like the conduit. It's it's almost always an insta-kill, except this time. Okay, well, that's fine. Honestly, I think that that is still totally valid because it means that uh, we're, we're taking out a lot of health in one move. So we're gonna go ahead and wait for them as well. So now they move, that means they don't have, we don't have a uh, straight line of sight anymore, which is interesting. That was a, it was a, that was an interesting way of, for that to develop. But you saw maybe 50% um, less sight there, so that they, they had a, a debuff on their hit. So we're, we are going to actually do some stuff now. Uh, we, I think I'll use our, our special move for the monk. I do really appreciate the animations in this game. They are like really, really solid. 
Uh, it would be nice if I could flank with our paladin, but it's not going to happen. So I think this will still be a kill. Nice. Now, these are undead. That means we're going to have to take an extra turn to kill these uh, pile, of, pile of bones. Now, this is actually a great um, opportunity to show off uh, Yurik's special ability he has. Um, where is it? This one. Let's him uh, kind of fire through two enemies. And that was it. That was a kill, and we did a nice chunk of damage. We'll go ahead and put the, the final nail in the coffin for that skeleton, and then we'll move over here and try and start doing damage to this guy. We could probably flank on our next turn. Oh, interesting. Okay, so yeah, that eye tells us that we don't have line of sight to that guy, but we can get line of sight. And hopefully that, that means, uh, yeah, we can we can put the put an end to that skeleton. You definitely have to weigh uh, how, how, like, how much do you want to take damage in order to make some extra risky moves happen. And I mean, like, yeah, it was worth um, our, our mage taking a little bit of extra damage in order for us to get some of our, our extra damage out on that turn. Harrowing experience. Even the bravest soldier is not immune to traumatic events. It will take a, a while to forget this one. Increased post-mission fatigue. All right, that's that's a bit dicey, but that means our time modifier has um, reset, so we can we can take a moment maybe to replenish. We'll use some bandages to uh, heal up. We do have weak ale. This one will restore uh, ten morale. We could re uh, increase our morale on uh, Agon. His morale was a little bit lower than some of the others, maybe. So we have an event on this. Runs their hand along a wall of interred dead, reading the inscription on each nameplate before moving on to the next. He stops at one, peering closer and double checking the name before turning with relief in his voice. This is the one we were told to look for, boss. About time, let's hope the contents are still intact. Reaching with both arms into the dark recess, Yurik firmly grabs hold of a coffin, its ancient and rotting wood creaking in protest. He gingerly slides the coffin partway out and pushes the lid aside, rummaging around briefly before pulling out the stashed pack with care. Taking a peek inside to confirm the contents, he walks over to you and hands off the bag. It's all there, no damage to the vials, from what I can tell. What does our employer want with them anyway? Uh, Alaric interjects, eager to share his knowledge on the matter. This here is a cure for the blight, or at least it sh slows the process. The vanguard keeps it tightly controlled, though, only treating those who pledge themselves to the order. As such, it's highly sought after on the black market, and it's why our employer is paying us so well. At least our efforts haven't been wasted. Let's regroup with Van and hope that they've found us a, an exit. So we'll do some more scouting. That eats up some more time, but it's, I think it's almost always worth doing. You can take a risk, for sure, but is it, uh, is it worth it? You hear a sudden movement in the darkness ahead. The sound of bones rattling and scraping along the stone floor. Bright green eyes turn toward you, and the undead being lets out a bone-chilling screech as it shuffles forward into the light of your torches. Moving faster than its size, an awkward gait would suggest was possible. Prepare yourselves for a fight. So they they get the first turn because I believe they, they got an ambush on us. I'm not sure necessarily. Um... They do have a ranged user, so we'll go ahead and um, set people behind stuff, just to just to try and make the most of this, get, draw them out, maybe get an extra attack. We'll delay, see what happens. Um, yeah, we can't yet attack anyone. It might not always be worth doing something like this, but I think it's it's definitely worth it to uh, just like see what the en enemy has what what where they're going to be when the turn is over like for instance there's a ni here's a nice um opportunity for both the arc lightning or perhaps if we could get well yurik is for sure not going to be able to make it but maybe we could ma help him make it like for instance i could get our monk here and shove this guy over and then maybe that extra distance is going to allow Yurik to use his special ability. I'll come over with the Paladin, 
And we can do a safeguard. That'll actually maybe oh well unfortunately it's gonna be right after this risen general takes their turn. So it's, again, uh, Agon kind of gets the short end of the stick here. But we can do an arc lightning here. Can't we can right? No. Okay. So we'll move. We'll have to move first. Which is fine, we'll move first, and then we'll use our Arc Lightning. This will be worth it, I think, because we can... Oh, he does, he's not even close to having enough. That's okay. Um, he's got a bit more health. 486 versus 263, so we want him to take an attack instead, if possible. So I'm going to have him run over, and hopefully he'll draw the attention of these warriors so i'm gonna move over here and then well actually that'll put him in flank won't it so actually that would not necessarily be good we'll just do a standard attack for now so he did take that attack now he has the safeguard we're now out of arc lightnings unfortunately so if i attack him he uh has a little bit of a uh, cover from the other warrior unfortunately the other warrior is going to die so it would actually be better hear me out here to attack this warrior instead this this undead because i'm hoping that this blade um infernal pillar will yeah there we go kill them both nice revives in one round so we're gonna have to deal with that guy nice he managed to dodge that attack so you can hold shift to do a, uh, to, to kind of like specify how you want them to move because like for instance I don't want to move through here to get to this bone because then I'll take an attack of opportunity from this risen general. Instead I'd like to uh, kind of move over here like this and I do want her to end on, on this spot because I would like her to eventually get flanking on this dude if he's still alive. Oh, but that used up her turn because it, turned, it counted as a uh, as a dash. That's that sucks. That's unfortunate. Can these guys swap? They can apparently swap without uh, invoking an attack of opportunity, which is great, because then I can put an end to that guy. Ooh, he had an extra special move there. That was a little bit brutal. She got a crit off. That's nice. I'm gonna use uh, attack this guy because he's gonna unfortunately just do some extra damage to us overall, and that's that's no good. I was really hoping I could try and flank this guy, but I didn't realize there was some cover there that was gonna prevent us from doing that. What I do might do instead is can we kick this guy? Unfortunately, that would kick uh, move the um, the paladin. So can we move switch her? I think that would actually be a good idea. We'll switch her, cause then no, she. Okay. It, was, it wasn't. It wasn't ideal, but it was something. Ah, uh, he's just gonna move back instead. Our monk is very close to being dead, and we don't have any healing left. Might be worth using a dawn, or sorry, a safeguard, just just to ensure that he does not die. I think we want to use a conduit. Just to, just to try and, like, kill this guy dead. Oh, no, a miss. Oh, that was, that was really bad timing. We want this conduit to kill him. Oh, they're so close to death. Okay, that conduit did end up killing. Okay, I really need this guy to die, so I'm going to use a special ability to ensure they're, they're dead put the final nail in that coffin and then kill this dude okay this was uh maybe maybe on a sub sub optimal combat but we did level up so that means we're going to be able to level up all of our dudes we'll we'll talk about this I, I appreciate first of all how um approachable they've done leveling up like they just straight up let you know these are the stats that are best for this character and they're going to play into um how you their skills uh perform 
right? That doesn't necessarily mean take them every time. You're probably going to want to take some toughness occasionally on a character that is underperforming or has less health, right? But it at least tells us right away, yeah, these are the skills you want. These are the skills they know they know. These are the skills they know. And then, then we're going to level up uh, one of their abilities. Now, each ability has its own kind of upgrade tree, which is pretty novel in its own right. And then there's other skills that that character can learn. So there's a lot of... Uh, kind of progression and also choices that the player can make in terms of how they want each character to develop. For instance, this uh, Crescent Wave, we could give gain plus one movement for one round. So I, I don't know if that's after they use the kick, they'll get uh, more momentum or mo more movement. They can, we can have the kick perform more damage. I really like the Fist of Fury and I like also to um, give it cleave. If a killing blow is dealt on the first hit, strike an adjacent enemy. So this this adds a bit more flexibility to to that. And then I think we get one more upgrade. Gain one additional charge, increase damage would be nice. So yeah, let's increase the damage. And that'll make that cleave more likely to happen. Uh, because that first that first blow is pretty good, but it could be better, right? So again, I'm just going to be boring uh, and pick our, our ideal skills for this first level up. Um, I, I really like the arc lightning, but the conduit is very helpful. I honestly, yeah, channel speed up would be really nice because uh, its worst feature is that it takes a long time to actually use. And um, gain an additional charge would actually be pretty nice. And then for Hanilda, Han Hanilda uh, again, I'll just pick a, her skills and then we'll go ahead and uh, I think I want to choose Dawn and give it more charges. Yeah. Generate two Radiant Stacks from the Guardian's passive ability. Two Radiant Stacks. I'm not sure what that means. Target gains 10 speed for one round. Well, we'll we'll do it just to see what, it, what happens. I actually didn't pick this last time. I think I picked something else. So we're okay. We're going to definitely have to take a moment to heal up because uh, people are not okay. 100% not okay. And we did get a debuff for doing that. The journey seems to have clouded your sense of time. You can't say for certain how long you've been here. One less unit of time required for each ev revolution on the time meter. All right. So that means it only takes 15 turns for uh, a debuff to be applied for sure. We'll do a scout. We have another event coming up. Your party comes to a standstill as muffled shouts and ringing steel reverberates down the corridor toward you. Yurik unsheathes his lance, motioning the rest of you forward as he breaks into stride, barreling towards the sound of battle. Oof. So we we get we get ambushed. Oh no, never mind. This is a combat that's already happening, and uh, we're we're coming in to assist, basically. Your party comes to a standstill. Uh, all right. With the last of the undead dealt, Van hails you across the chamber with a flick of his hand, a relieved smile forming upon his face as he strides closer to meet you. Did you find it then? The exit's just beyond here. Been trying to keep it clear of the dead, but they're just they just keep coming. Um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna skip the rest of this injury recovery. You'll want to seek treatment. Um, so it uh, you know recovering from a dungeon is not necessarily straightforward you do have to get to an infirmary infirmary which means you have to get to a town yes there is gear breakdown that means there's durability repairing it is simple but all this really means is that um the longer you spend in a dungeon and the more combats you do uh the the more worn down you're just going to be like it's it's going to be pretty brutal also you have to consider how many how much uh, provisions you have like you know your healing your bandages um stuff like that also spells and stuff so in a way, this game, it, it really does capture the sense of preparation for an adventure that I haven't really seen from a lot of other games. Like you, you it's not straightforward. You're not just like given a bunch of stuff. You have to really consider uh, like how, how hard is this dungeon going to be? Um, how much do I have? Do I have enough bandages? Do I have enough food? Um, you know, like how long have we spent in the dungeon? How many heals do I have? It's, it's all stuff you kind of have to figure out and uh, consider and think about. So um, we've got a we've got a lot of dialogue here. Basically, 
Um, one of our, our best adventure, our level four adventure, has decided to retire, which makes a lot of sense. And then something happens. Um, they basically get attacked by a mystery group. I'm gonna go ahead and spoil this because I, you know, I want to talk a bit about the overview map before we we end this. Um, surrounded, Hanelda's head whips around, searching frantically for any possible escape at the raider's edge. As the raiders edge closer, beyond the ring of enemies, Torrin and a few other familiar faces emerge from the darkness, which, with bloodied weapons drawn. So it's it's Torin. Oh no, Torin has uh, betrayed us. I'm sorry, I uh, I can't uh, necessarily um, provide the weight required <laughs> that this that this story uh, reveal would would uh, mean. But um, this is kind of the inciting incident of our story. Uh, we've we've been betrayed, and uh, you know we're not necessarily sure if if our, our friend is is alive or well. The person who like he was two days to retirement as as an adventurer, and now and now what you know? So you have to fight these these marauders now instead of the undead. When I first did this combat, I will say I wasn't quite sure if um, this was a combat you could win, and then I ended up winning it. So this is that kind of game, you know, like um, things can really change and develop in a combat, and you're gonna think, yeah, oh, wow, this, the deck is really stacked against us, and there's no way we can actually like do this, right? But no, you totally can. You have the tools available to you. Your like your uh, your moves really do make the difference how you how you affect things like for instance um you know well this guy's gonna get a shot off but he had to shoot through that co that cover right so we we got a slight uh advantage there but i definitely want to focus on one character at a time hopefully can we maybe kill this dude yes that's that's really gonna matter um the ranged units are definitely something that concerns me maybe uh what i'd like to do is get over here behind the cover and then take an extra turn to safeguard some of our units like for instance our monk again well we're right behind the cover right so we should be able to hit units we could honestly we could spend an extra turn to do a conduit on the ranged user so that we take less damage. One thing I do appreciate, I mean, this would make for a more punishing experience and I'm kind of glad that it, you know, they, they foregoed some of the punishing mechanics, but uh, if a mage magic user is ca like casting a spell and they get hit, it doesn't like, oh, they, they failed to, you know, their concentration <laughs> check or something like that. Um, that's always been something that I, I like i understand that it is more realistic and it adds a lot more risk to a combat to, to being a magic user but i'm kind of glad they didn't do that and this is the kind of game i would expect to see something like that in it um so i'm gonna come over here i think we should if we're here we should be okay from the the other ranged user i'm just gonna do a normal standard attack on this guy I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna we're gonna you know we've got our spells back. There's no reason not to use them liberally. Um let's see. I'd like to do another conduit on this other outlaw. But I'm not sure if the other if if I move over here, are these other guys gonna be able to hit us? I can't even reach him now, so I may as well keep going. And then uh we'll do we'll yeah, we'll do another conduit. Oh, interesting. I can only hit this guy. All right, we'll do a standard attack. Some of the environmentals are creating a problem for me. He shot on the monk, but the monk was protected by that spell. Okay, now I'm going to move the monk around so that um, the paladin will get to have some extra flanking, but I'm actually going to delay his turn. Uh, and this will mean that, well, unfortunately the monk will be flanked, but this will mean that the paladin will get to have a flank, and then the monk will also get to have a flank. Um, 
So I am going to take an extra turn to, to go ahead and conduit, attack this guy. This guy is going to be a problem. Our monk may actually die. Oof. Oh my god. Bleed out. When a character's health drops to zero in combat, they will enter a bleed out state and their health value will be re replaced by a bleed out pool. This pool is persistent throughout the course of a dungeon. Their bleed out pool will drop by one on their turn and from, for, from attacks suffered, permanent death will occur if the pool is depleted. So we again kind of have like death, death rolls. I actually, uh, I didn't, this never happened to me. So, um, and you can, you can undo it by making sure that they get healed. So they can still take attacks and they're probably going to, yeah. So we definitely have to take uh, a turn to heal our monk up so that they're no longer dying. But I see that their death, their bleed pool does not change. It's still at two. So if they get put into bleed out mode again, then they may, they, they may actually die. Interesting, okay. I love uh, when you, like a, a move, ends up being successful. Um, will this kill him? This will put us in flank again, but I'm going to do it because if this kills him on the first move, it didn't. There might have been a chance to cleave on the other one. Okay, he's in bleed out mode again, which means I have to again use the paladin to heal him up again. I really hope I don't lose the monk. I didn't end up losing the monk on the on the other turn, on the other playthrough. I'm gonna go ahead and use Conduit to kill this archer. He's really being a problem. Honestly, good. The, the mage has plenty of health and the monk is like really having a hard time right now. Oh, uh, stop, stop hitting the monk though. Okay, we're gonna flank this guy. I think that stunned him. All right. So that was a little bit dicey, but um, we did end up getting through that combat. Having all of our spells and stuff back definitely you know, helps helps make that happen. All right, so Torrin has betrayed us, and uh, we're gonna have to pursue them. But before we do, uh, you know, we're gonna have to get our adventuring legs, as it were, and and maybe consider doing taking on some extra missions, um, taking on some other party members, and this is where the game. Uh, really kind of shines because it you know yes there is a story and the story is is engaging and it's something you want to do more of you want to see more of but also this game is a is a very a very effective adventure sandbox which i really appreciate so we have our caravan the caravan is an is a also takes time and that's going to matter when it comes to how like how much food we have it also matters because our adventures demand pay they demand salary and uh, so you have to kind of plan around, well, like, you know, we, we I'm going to have to pay everyone by this day, which means we're going to have to do a number of missions to make up that money, as well as the extra money it's going to take if we want to, like, you know, repair our gear, buy more gear, buy potions, buy stuff like that. You know, like, it, it's there's a lot of management in that regard. It's almost like a, a adventuring party management simulator, you know? So they're gonna need some time to recover, not just their health, but their morale. Um, we do have a new party member. I think I believe they just give you one. They're they're kind of an apprentice uh, mage, I believe. I might be wrong about that. Check out the infirmary. I'm not sure. I think everyone's healed up. I don't know. Pulled hamstring. Okay, so they they need a little bit of extra time to to heal up. So we'll leave them in the, the infirmary. Because of our reputation, we get a discount. And these are all things I really appreciate. I mean, this is gonna add to the kind of the sandbox -ness of this game is, uh, you know, you could maybe like focus on like doing missions for one town, get your reputation up. Then you know like, oh, uh, maybe I get a discount when I go to the mar marketplace, which, you know, I definitely want to check out. Oh, uh, looks like they don't have anything right now. But um, you know, we, we can definitely repair our gear, which we're going to want to do. And then we're going to want to go to the inn so that we can huh, buy around. This is where you can recruit new adventures. Um, buying around brings everyone's morale up. Also, I guess we can we can rest here for a few days. And this is going to allow uh, uh, our, our friend in the infirmary to 
fully heal, get their get their injuries dealt with. Sightings of reanimated corpses have been reported in the area and civilians are growing nervous. Plus 5% buy price, plus 5% sell price. Plus 10%, negative 10% market coin. So there's not as much money here. So if we had stuff to sell, we probably could not make as much money as we would want. Back on your feet, pick up some work from the from local Vanguard representative. We have a certain amount of time to complete this offer. Uh, again, I'm going to skip this. There is a lot of story, and there's all, but there's also a lot of game to show off. Uh, I feel like you know the, the story is something. First of all, you're going to want to experience on your own time. Um, the story is also something I would want to showcase if I'm doing a series. And I know I've been saying it a lot lately, but I really would like to do a series on this game. I think it would be a lot of fun, um, especially considering the sandboxiness of this game. Uh, we'll we'll kind of have a look at doing this mission and then I'll probably leave it at that. Manage your company. Fatigued for 15 days. Infirmary for 15 days. Seven days. Okay, we're going to have to stay at the inn for like 15 more days. We have no characters with fatigue. But what about what about my company? Infirmary for 10. So Agon is in the infirmary for a little bit longer. Um... Uh, Heals in 10 days when placed in the infirmary. I did place him in the infirmary though. So maybe we just don't get him back for a while. Toggle the borders of the region. Oh, we have different houses as well that maybe have control over different regions and cities. Oh, we could look for potential. Oh, okay, so since we are missing a dude, we just have to consider uh, adding new people to our party. So uh, we have Hilden Dunebarrow. He's a pyrolancer. Um, Ian Fled Knight Tavern, who's a huntress. I assume that means they have a bow. Can pick off her enemies from afar. Yeah. Pugilist. Uh, thrives in close quarters combat with their fist. Reign supreme. I think I want a huntress. I'd, I'd like a huntress. They're also the cheapest one. 123 for one year or 95 per year for four years with a 50 <laughs> signing bonus. It's like I'm, uh, you get a free phone as well if you, uh, take on a contract for four years. Um... Sure, I'll take I'll take one year. Well, I won't worry too much about the the nuance of that. So we basically we've spent quite a bit of money. So now we will leave. And here's our mission here. We can we can have a look. I'll do a quick zoom around to see what the the full map looks like. We can see maybe the different houses and also the different borders. So maybe there's different politics that happen in these different regions which uh, may affect the story or may affect your experience. Uh, I don't know if this this location, we can see there's a city wall here. I don't know if this location is like um, blocked off to me because it's part of the story or maybe that is just not in the game yet because you know the, the early access. So we'll, we'll go ahead and check out this um, other point of interest for the story. And um, I won't complete this mission actually because you're gonna see basically you're gonna see what that uh, what this means like you know uh, the the world the the towns and taking missions are very much vehicles for uh, more combat and more um, dungeons and you like very you very much know what that looks like at this point more demons fast approaching. What is going to change um, is that, okay, first of all, we can pick and choose our adventures, right? So uh, we could ch pick Yurik uh, Redwater, who is available. Um, uh, what's her name? Infled is well rested. So we're probably going to want to take her. Also, uh, I think that she is a lower level. Yurik is, is level four, right? So he is going to be, I mean, he's going to be worth taking if we can could take Lambard, but I think you're gonna you're gonna want to train other adventurers up, right? You're gonna want to have a nice selection of uh, adventures, and that means training more than than your favorites up. Because what happens if your favorites get knocked out in a combat? Uh, you're definitely gonna want to take some provisions. Now, here's the thing: yes, these cost money, but um, here's the thing: is if you make it through the dungeon without using these, you get a refund. Which is nice. I, I appreciate that. That's a nice little touch. 
Standing alongside the cave's entrance, you motion to the weary refugees as they file past you, encouraging them to quicken their pace. With everyone inside, you look back to the plains one last time, frowning at the approaching void spawn, now clearly visible to the naked eye. As you enter the depths, a shriek at the front of the column causes a commotion. You push your way through the crowd to see a mutilated animal slumped on the ground. Ian fled uh, already down on their knees and examining the wounds. They turn to look at you, scratching their brow with a puzzled expression. Could have been demons, but I can't say for sure. They point to a series of deep lacerations on the creature's body. Not the work of any human, anyway. Regardless, we're obviously not alone down here. Tread carefully. Do a bit of scouting. We'll have to make decisions here. I, I seem to recall these connect up. If it is the same dungeon, and it looks like it is. So that might mean that uh, dungeons are, are actually, like, handmade and not procedurally generated. I'm honestly not sure about that. I honest, I, I, I don't mind either way. Like the combats are pretty satisfying. I, it wouldn't matter to me if they were procedurally generated. That obviously adds a little bit of replayability. I also wouldn't mind if they were handmade. Even if it reduces the replayability, I would still want to replay the game because there are other forms of replayability in the form of different characters and different skills that we can kind of progress in our own way. Um. <clears throat> I, I, def I, I know that there's been an emphasis on like having generated content because it, the, 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 you know, the theory is like, well, that's going to make for the most replayability. I don't think that that's necessarily true because sometimes you, your generated battlefields are going to feel kind of generic and not interesting. Um, so I actually thinking having had handmade combat scenarios is, is going to eventually lead to you know, more replayability in some ways. Okay. So we're, we're gonna, we're just gonna, you know, pick away. So what, what kind of um, moves do we have? Channel until her next turn, performing a basic attack on any enemy that moves within two cells of her position. The channel ends if two enemies are hit. Interesting. Okay, so that, that I like Overwatch mechanics, and this one gives us a slight advantage in that we can hit two different, uh, targets but i'm just gonna have her do a, a basic attack nothing fancy for now so this one dog is taking a huge beating ouch it's a darn shame we can't get to here without using up a dash um because then he could do a nice attack on both of these guys Whatever. Can, can he at least kill this dog? Yes. Whale. Also, our monk is standing on a particularly scary looking spot. Someone has, like, cast a spell on it. Um, what is this? Unable to move or sprint. Okay. Well, that's it. That's a real shame because that they need to be able to move. So they'll wait instead. So what is this move? Rapid fire. Lose... Loose two arrows at a single enemy. If the target dies from the first shot, the second hits the nearest enemy within range. Okay. But uh, this has a shorter range than their basic attack, so they're going to have to move forward no matter what. Nice. That does a nice chunk of damage. Maybe we can kill this guy uh, with our mage. Yes. No. Oh. Bummer. Um... Damage a single adjacent target applies burn. Uh, I was hoping maybe that would it would leave a, a spot, like a, a burn on the on the floor, so that if something else came up, oh, I missed on top of it. Oh my god! So what is this debuff? This is going very differently than the first time I played this. Fear, fear clouds the victim's head. Wow, this is that's miserable. Um, okay, this is actually perfect because hopefully it'll kill it. Yeah, and then and then he can attack someone else. No point in doing a conduit because uh, it's this guy's still gonna get a, a, an attack, unfortunately. So he's feared, therefore he doesn't get a turn. This is really going badly, actually. This is going so much worse than the first than the, in my first playthrough. Okay, again, this is going to work out because um, 
We can kill this dude. I love this death animation. It's so, like, unnecessarily extra, and I love that. Alright. Well, that was, that was truly miserable. We might, well, we're gonna have to take an extra moment. Oh, we're at 15 with each revolution of the, okay, so we should actually make camp. Making camp is going to reset the time marker, but risk having another combat. And this isn't a particularly good place to do that, by the way, because there was three exit points. You're gonna wanna do it in a place where there's a little bit more a safety. But I'm doing it now, one, to show off the mechanic, and two, because it's genuinely a good time to do that. Disrupt chance, modify incense. Restore vitality. Restore stamina. Battle hardened. Recover 28, five HP for every battle. Or recover HP by 10%. So we could do two of one incense or we could do two different incense. All injuries are stabilized. I don't know if anyone has any injuries. Recover four ability charges at random. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice because then uh, our archer will get their abilities back. Okay, so let's let's do that. I like this this uh, this uh, you know like different choices at camp to to recover different things. You jolt awake, your rest disturbed by a far off noise, though you can't be certain it wasn't simply part of a dream. You sit upright and glance at the campfire. Now little more than embers, your companions sound asleep around it. Investigate the noise. You stumble away from the campfire to investigate the noise, soon spotting a group of enemies encroaching on your position. Unsure if you've been seen or not, you shamble, scramble back to your companions, raising the alarm. Nice, nice little uh, flavor there. That really does give me some D&D &D vibes. We've got a temptress. Oh no. Um, I don't know if she's ranged. But I'm going to assume that she is. She's also going to get to move before most of our characters. Except our monk. Our monk's going to get to go first. I don't think I want to move aggressively. So I think that we're going to want to do something along these lines. And hold out for a turn. Did she have line of sight? Ah, uh, it's a shame I can't. Oh, actually, it's not the monk's turn yet. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have the I'm gonna have the archer move here and then do an Overwatch. Cause I she may very well yeah there's there's one. Ooh. Okay, she didn't get to attack it twice, but I thought maybe um, for a moment there I thought maybe she she was going to get to. Okay, we get to that overwatch did do an extra bit of damage to that dog though which uh gave us an, an opportunity let's see if we can't set off a trap with a fire trap um something tells me that this is not going to pay off but i'll try it anyway you never know oh oh it actually did and the second shot went off that was perfect we get to kill that guy That was, that was really nice. I'll move uh, the monk over here so that we can possibly set up flanking. Corrupting touch. Okay, that just did a little bit of extra damage. We'll just shoot them. Nothing fancy. Again, we'll just shoot them. Oh, we missed. That's a, that's a real bummer. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move this guy. This guy's got the most health, so I'm gonna move him over here in the hopes that it draws the ire of this guy, and it did. Unfortunately, it gave him bleeding. Bleeding is uh, any action you take um, causes you to take some damage. Fortunately, the only person marked with that... Uh, oh, wait, darkness. Are silenced and unable to use abilities while occupying this hex. Okay, well, it didn't really matter, but I should have paid a bit more attention to what kind of effects that zone was creating for us. I'm just going to go ahead and... This guy is going to take some damage for doing this, but it's going to be worth it. So we got some loot. We got we got a healing potion, free healing potion, which is nice. We're definitely going to want to use some of that. 
we could just use a bandage. That is, that is uh, taking some time. You move through the corridor, keeping a watchful eye on your surroundings. Ah, we have a trap. First trap. Disarm the trap for four t turns. We have some tools that should help with this. Use tools to disarm the trap. That only takes two turns. Or we could ignore it and probably take some extra damage. Ah, but using the tools, we still lo ended up losing a bit of damage. Agon's, uh, sweat beads on Agon's brow as they attempt to disarm the trap. Their shaking fingers suddenly slip, causing a hail of arrows to lose from the walls and wound your party. Oof. Brutal. Okay. Ah, so it's a good thing I scouted the zone because there was a combat there. Unfortunately, we are uh, going to run out of time. And we're going to get a new debuff. We didn't get to see it. Ah, the enemy are now well aware of her presence and have prepared accordingly. Increase chance of ambush in remaining encounters by 10%. This is uh, this is uh, unfortunate because it would give will give the enemy uh, an advantage when when uh, combat starts. I think this is a good place for the uh, monk. In fact, I'm going to try and double down on this. Although Yurik is is after the dog. That's okay. The dog's probably going to fight the monk. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play aggressively on this one. Actually, if I do a kick on him, I don't know if that, does that uh, mean they, they fall through? No, they just take, they don't take any extra damage. Okay, that's a, that's kind of a bummer. So I'm gonna move the archer forward a bit and do a, uh, another overwatch. The overwatch worked out well for me. It might've been a fluke, but I'm gonna, I'm going to assume it was not a fluke and that I know what I'm doing. We're going to do a conduit on this guy. Ouch. I think I just want to do a flaming lance on this dog. Yeah, hopefully the dog will die. Nice, that arrow worked out. And that other arrow worked out. Awesome. Oh, unfortunately, our dude is also taking some flanking damage. Okay, well, the monk will have to put the, the final nail on that dog. We'll go ahead and do a rapid fire. Um, not sure how we can deal with this. Can we can we kill this guy? Possibly. I feel like I'm going to use this flaming lance just, just so that no one else has to take any more damage. And also we guarantee hitting it. All right, we leveled up. Or, or sorry, in, in fled leveled up. So again, I'm just gonna be boring about this. I kind of really like Overwatch. Increase damage and then continue to increase damage. I like that. Take the loot. And I think I'm gonna leave it here. This is a this has been a fairly long uh, let's try. I know I'm probably gonna edit it down, but even still there's quite a lot to show off for this game. Um, this is definitely a game I would love to do a series on maybe when it's closer to being uh, at 1.0. But either way, I really, really enjoy the combat of this one. Your 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 actions, your decisions really matter. I like the exploration, uh, the choices you have to make um, in regards to how much time you spend uh, and the risks you have to take. I also appreciate the sandbox nature of taking quests and kind of moving around on the uh, over map. I'd like to see how the story develops and, and uh, like maybe how what the mid to late game looks like. But in the meantime, I think I've shown off uh, a lot of the aspects of this game. There's probably a lot more and depending on what kind of adventures you're going to get, what kind of classes you're going to see, there's, there's a lot to see here that I, I can't possibly show off all of. Um, but in any case, if you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, I would definitely appreciate it if you could hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're new to my combat uh, my content and uh i'll see you guys next time thank you very much for watching